This is nice and dirty on the outside. We do have a little piece missing here, some damage. On the back here, we also have kind of an impact mark from it being dropped, it looks like. Get these stickers out of the way. And it looks like these ones have been off before, which is weird because the sticker over on the left didn't seem like it had. And this one also seems like it hasn't come off and I'm having a tough time getting it. These stickers can be really tricky because there's almost like two levels of sticker. You can think that you're getting the entirety of it and you're actually still leaving a secondary sticker on behind just like that so we actually have to dig in here and get this second level at this point with the condition that this shell is already in i'm honestly not concerned about these stickers i'm not going to put them back on but if you did want to replace your stickers you'd probably want to be a little bit more careful taking them off or if you were smarter than me, you could use a heat gun or hair dryer to loosen them up a bit first. Carefully lift up on our power supply here. Just going to fish this wire through here and get it out of the way. Have to push down on this little tab and then we can pull back on this ribbon cable and that'll come out. I don't know what that is. Shouldn't be in there. Some piece of tape that was probably holding the wire. We have our disk drive out. Let's get this last part of the shell off here. We're going to kind of go back and forth when tightening or loosening this bracket to keep even pressure. Hey, we have a screw that was hiding from us and it actually wasn't even in the iFixit walkthrough I was going through, which is probably for a slightly different edition of this PS4. That's what I expect a PS4 fan to look like. And this is sticking for some reason. See this little plastic tab kind of has a little piece that is in the way. So I'm going to trim that off and then we should just be able to pull that up over that.
Well, same tab as catching there. There we go. Let's take this part of the disk drive off to be able to see the inside. It is really gross in there. Very dirty. All right, let's soap it up. I'm just going to do this piece at a time since a lot of these are big and would just be in the way. A lot of this dirt is just coming off nice and easy here. One thing about this system is there wasn't any liquid that I could see spilled inside of it. No bugs. It's just dust. Just dirt. A lot of dirt that gets into it. Uh, clearly the outside is very dirty so it was in a dirty environment. But that fan also draws then a lot of that dirt that's on the outside in the environment inside. And so we're just dealing with a lot of dirt. So mostly cleaning is going to do our job here as far as making it look good again. We do have a few marks that aren't coming off that easy with the clean. Since I'm on a matte surface here, I'm going to use just some gentle pressure here with a magic eraser. For this type of work, I am happy with the job that it does, and I don't see any noticeable damage that's done. But as I always say, I definitely wouldn't do it on a glossy surface, and I recommend caution when using Magic Eraser because it is abrasive. There we go. Looks pretty good. Just get this mark off of the rubber foot here. I don't know how well this is picking up on camera, but I can see the color changing with my naked eye pretty easily here. Just getting rid of that layer of grime. There's a little bit of tape stuck on here. Get a couple more marks that are being a little bit more stubborn. I'm probably being a little too aggressive with the magic eraser for many people's taste, but it is still looking very good. Now this is the glossy part. On this white PS4, it's just this one top left panel that is glossy. And there is a mark on here that I'm not going to use the magic eraser on. We'll save that for afterwards and I'll probably just attack it with isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip. Let's get this inner housing cleaned. And that's actually gonna be it for our brushing. Now we are going to have a lot of collection of this dirt built up right here. I'm going to remove the chunks with this brush and kind of give it a good brushing out. And then I'm going to do something today that is going to be a little bit different than I would recommend. And the big difference in what I recommend is that I wouldn't recommend doing this indoors. I want to film it. So I'm actually going to use my indoor studio here and I'm going to use this electric air duster of mine, which I love. This isn't a vacuum. It's pushing the dirt away, not bringing it into a container of any kind. So it's just going to create a lot of dust here in my workspace. But 
For a project like this, if I were just doing this and cleaning my own, I would want to use this duster outside and remove a lot of this dirt. And I'm finding that it actually does a really good job, especially uh, getting any of that surface dirt that has built up, maybe even eliminating the need for me to use isopropyl alcohol and Q-tips or wipe anything else off using another method. So here I'm gonna use it again on this metal plate and just go over it really well. This particular air duster comes with a bunch of little attachments and I like this one that just kind of keeps it as a focused nozzle but also has a brush on the end of it. Really helpful for just loosening up and removing that dirt. Here, this shiny metal piece will really give you a good view of what this thing is doing. When I initially started cleaning this project, I wasn't intending to use this air duster for so much of it. But I'm finding that with this one in particular, since it isn't wet inside, uh, since the dirt seemed to be very dry that had gathered inside of there, it's just doing an awesome job of cleaning on its own. So I'm pretty much going over almost everything with it. And I'm finding when I'm done doing that, that I don't really think I have anything else to do to clean it. I can get this and that air will help get down underneath all of these little gears and this mechanism for the disk drive. We'll get the back side too, as well as the face. I'm just amazed right now at how this is turning out. Now I'm gonna try cleaning this entire thing without taking it apart further just by using this air duster. might take a little bit to kind of get in all the angles that I want to get into but in real time for me for working this is saving so much compared to using isopropyl alcohol and q-tips to try to kind of wet clean this entire thing again this wouldn't be helpful if I had you know soda pop or something or bug grossness inside of here but just with dust man it's doing a good job Sorry if I'm gushing on and on about it. I'm just really in love with this tool right now. One thing that I will note is that I have turned the volume on the recording of cleaning this down considerably. These electric air dusters make a lot of noise and you wouldn't want to hear that at full blast. Look at that. Just looks like new. Mm, good feels. Okay, let's get this clumpy dust build up out of the way. And then we'll just use the air duster on the Wi Fi antenna. And like everything else, it looks great. Now without having to take this power supply apart, the air should push and move a lot of this dust through here and kind of do at least a decent job of cleaning up the inside from the outside. So we'll go ahead and get the surface here so it looks good and get that dust off of there. But now I'm gonna come from this side and I can see that dust, just look at that. It's terrible for my workspace, but it's great for this power supply. Again, do this outside, and it's going to go a lot better for you. I also should mention that I'm wearing a mask for this, because I don't want to breathe all this.
And here we have our fan. I'm going to brush a little bit of this off here just to show you how much is on here as it comes off onto my table. With this one, I am not going to clean it inside my shop. This is just too much for me to throw all around my workspace. So I am going to take it outside, give it a good air dusting, and bring it back and show you what it looks like just with that, doing nothing else besides using this machine. And that's it. Again, if you really put it under a microscope, you might be able to see something, but that just almost looks like new. So yeah. I'm loving this thing. Going to do the same thing with our motherboard here. I'm going to be kind of careful where these little pads are around the CPU because I don't want them to blow off because they're really annoying and to just kind of keep in place when you're putting it all back together. But I don't mind putting this brush right on the motherboard. These bristles are not that abrasive, they're very soft, but they do help loosen that dirt up and get it moving, get it out of there. I am going to leave a link in the description for our paid affiliate Amazon link. Uh, as I do with uh, all of my most recommended products, but I have started including this air duster on that list because I am finding it to be my new favorite toy. Alright, let's get this old thermal paste off of here. It's using my Q-tip and a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. There we go. Looks nice and clean. And of course, I have to clean off my workstation. Here's that mark on the glossy surface that I didn't want to use the magic eraser on and with a Q-tip and IPA, no problem. Let's get it put back together. Hey, Robert from the future here. If you're following along, I missed a piece there. So skip ahead to 2220 if you want to see where that goes. I don't think that's the perfect amount of thermal paste. In fact, I think a lot of people are going to think that's too much. But Steve has told me many times again that from what he has researched, it doesn't matter how much thermal paste is in there as long as you have enough. So I always just try to make sure that I have enough. Just using a multimeter here to test and make sure that that battery still has charge and as a three volt battery, it seems to have enough. So I'm going to save the earth a little bit and not replace it right now.
Hey, I put that screw in the wrong place. There, you see that one in the middle I removed so that I can actually put it on there now. One of our screws is underneath that wire. just clip back in nice and satisfying like and we found a piece that we didn't account for and I figured out where it goes, and we're gonna have to take almost the entire thing apart in order to put it there. I considered doing all of this off camera, but then I thought, hey, if I just speed it up really fast, you'll get to watch it, and it won't take that long. So here we go. And this is where that goes. Let's get this put back together. I just want to clean up this sticker residue a little bit better here. So of course, using IPA, and that looks good. This was a super satisfying clean. I really enjoyed this process. If you enjoyed this and you think you might enjoy watching another one of my videos, be sure to check out whatever YouTube recommends next or just go to my page and search for the console that you enjoy.